In this video, I'm going to attempt to give you an intuition be behind why multiplying binomials involve combinatorics, why we actually have the binomial coefficients in there at all. So let me, and, and I'm going to do multiple colors. I, the, the colors will actually be non-arbitrary this time. I'll actually, uh, just to give you intuition. So let's multiply a plus b to the third power. Well, a plus b to the third power, that's a plus b, let me see, a plus b times, and I'm going to keep switching colors. You're going to have to bear with me, but it should hopefully be fruitful. Times a plus b times, let me pick an appropriately different color, maybe a blue, times a plus b. Right? And let's do this as a distributive property. This equals a times, go back in green, a plus b. Well, it's a different green. Well, let me make sure I use the, the right green, just because the colors matter this time. a plus b, I know this is tedious, but it's worth it, plus b times a plus b, and then all of that, all of that times a plus b again. Right? And let's multiply this inside part. So that's, and I'm not even going to, I'm just going to keep it multiplied out. So it's going to be a, a times green a, right? We know they're all the same a. Plus, let me just do plus. I should do the pluses in a neutral color, but it's OK. Plus a times, you might be finding this tedious, but it's going to pay off in the end. a times b. And then we have plus b times a plus yellow b. Yellow B times green B. And then all of that. We're almost there. We're almost there. All of that times A plus B. And so essentially we're going to distribute, we're going to multiply A times everything, this blue A times all of this, and then plus this blue B times all of this. So let's multiply the blue A times all of this. So the first term will be yellow A, green A, and then blue A. So it'll be. A, 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 now that it's different blue, but I think you get the point, plus this times blue A, so yellow A, A, green B, B, and then blue A, A, plus yellow B, B, green A, A, blue A, A, hopefully I'm not confusing you, ba, B-A-A. -A. We're almost there. Plus yellow B, yellow B times green B times blue A. So we did all the blue A's, finally, times the blue A. Plus, plus. Now we're going to do all the blue. We're going to do the blue B times everything. So it's yellow A, yellow A, times green A, right? Yellow A, green A, then blue B, times green A, times blue B. Almost there. I know this is tedious. Times blue B plus yellow A. Intuition doesn't come easy though. Yellow A. So we're on this term. Yellow A, green B, blue B. So green B times blue B. Now we're at yellow B. The good thing about the colors is it's easy to keep track of where we are. Plus yellow B times green A times green A times blue B. And then we're at the last one. Plus. Yellow B, yellow B, green B, green B, times blue B.
times blue b. So this is the expansion of a plus b to the third power, right? We haven't simplified it at all, but and I did that for a reason because you see that every term here, what what is what what's happening here? Every term has exactly one. Um, it's three numbers being multiplied, right? Every term is three mul numbers being multiplied, and it's one of, you know, the yellow number comes from the first from this yellow a plus b, the green number, the middle number comes from this middle a plus b, and then the blue number comes from this right hand a plus b. And you saw me. I went all the way through it, right? So hopefully you believe this point. So so let's think about it a couple of different ways. Every term, essentially, we're essentially for, to, to generate each of these terms in the expansion of a plus b to the third, we're picking either a or b from, you know, we're, for the, from the yellow a plus b, we're picking either a or b, right? We picked an a here, we picked an a here, we picked a b here, a b here, an a here, an a here, a b. In the group from the green a plus b, we're picking either an a or b, and then from the blue a plus b, we're picking either an a or b, right? So essentially, the expansion, if you think about it, this expansion, we've essentially done every every way of choosing three different things, right? Every way of picking either an a or a b from these three different terms. And that ends up with these, what is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 terms, right? Now let's make it a little bit, uh, let's give you a little bit more intuition of what's going on. I think as you're starting to, uh, starting to realize why this is dealing with permutations and combinations, and combinations in particular. Once we simplify it, what happens? This is a to the, a to the cubed, right? That's the only a cubed term. This is a squared b. What are the other a squared b terms? Let's see, a squared b. This is also a squared b. So let me let me write down all the a squared. So let's see, let's see how many a squared b terms there are. I'll do it in a neutral color. So this is this is a squared b. This is b a squared, but that's also a squared b. What's another a squared b? This is also a squared b, right? A times a times b. So there was three ways to get a squared b, and that's why you know when we eventually write the expansion, it's it's going to we know that the coefficient in front of it is three a squared b, right? Of the the coefficient on the a squared b term when we actually multiply it out, and we've done that several times already when we we did the binomial theorem, especially when we took to the third power. So where did this three come from? And why is that the same thing as when we learned the binomial, uh, the definition of the binomial theorem? Why is, you know, does it just happen to be the case that that's the same thing as three choose two times a squared b? Well, no. Think of it this way: we already know that every term here, every term in the expansion, we're essentially picking either an a or a b from each of these, right? We have to pick one term from each of these. So the way you could think of it, for a squared b, to get a squared b, we have to essentially say, well, how many combinations, and that's the key word, how many combinations are there where out of these three, out of these three a plus b terms, I am choosing the a term. I'm choosing two a terms, right? Because to, to get a squared, I have to pick an a term twice, right? And so that's where I have to pick two a terms out of the three times I pick. So I'm picking three times. Two of the times, I'm picking an a term. So out of three times, I'm choosing two. And that's where three choose two comes from for the a squared b term. And so you could, you know, for the a b squared term, you could say, well, I'm, I'm picking an a once. How many ways are there to choose a once when I'm taking from three things? So it could be three choose, three choose one. But that's also the same thing, or it should be equal to. You could also say, well, I'm picking, how many ways are there to pick b twice if I'm picking three times? Well, if, if it's a b squared, I'm picking b twice. So it's, that should be equal to 3 choose 2 a b squared. And if you work these out, you will find that, yes, these both turn out to be 3. And actually, that's why there's some symmetry there. Um, and, and the combinations all work out, but but hopefully that's giving you an intuition. Essentially, when you when you're doing the binom so the binomial expansion of this, let me just rewrite it again. It is, you know, this is a plus b to the third. It's three choose zero of a cubed b to the zero plus three choose one of a 
squared b to the 1, we could say, plus 3 choose 2 of a b squared plus 3 choose 3 of a, no, of a to the 0 b cubed. So what's this saying? What's 3 choose 3 saying? How many ways, if I'm, taking, if I'm choosing from three different things, how many ways can I pick exactly three b's, right? That's how you could view it. How many ways can I pick three b's? I'm either picking an a or a b, right? You could say it's either a heads or tails, or you know, red or black or white, but it's, it's either a or b. How many ways can I choose b three times from three things? Well, when you evaluate this, you get this to be 1, and that makes sense, because it's 1b cubed. And similarly, I mean, you could view this as how many ways, when I'm picking out of three things, can I pick exactly 0b's? Right? That's 3 choose b. Or how many ways can I pick exactly 0b's? Well, that's the same thing as how many ways can I pick exactly 3a's? And this is also one. There's only one way to do it, and that's the way. Once again, there's only one way to do this one, and this was the way. There's three ways to get a squared b. There's three, there's three combinations. Um, there's there's three possible actually, well, unique permutations, and but they're all the same combination, right? So there's three uh, identical combinations for picking two a's and a b, and those are this one, this one, and this one. So hopefully I didn't confuse you, and hopefully at minimum that gives you a, 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 a glancing intuition of why combinations are even involved in the binomial theorem, or whether they're even involved when you're expand, expanding a binomial to some power. Uh, and, and at best, I, I really hope that I've given you a deep intuition for why this happens. I will see you in the next video.